The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on their bye week, but we look ahead to the back half of the season and how the Bucs can ride their recent momentum into a strong finish. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com, joined by the one, the only Mr. Evan Klosky of 10 Tampa Bay. Of course, you can check out what he's doing there on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 Tampa Bay. Dot com and follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at Eklosky WTSP. Again, we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I am going to start this episode off with an apology to everyone. My sincerest apologies for not getting an episode up yesterday. My computer decided it was going to just die. So mm-hmm. thanks to my lovely wife working very diligently on it all morning while I was at work. We are up and running once again. I don't have to blow my Christmas fund for the children on a new computer for myself as much as I may want to. But we are back It is a WTSP Wednesday. Evan, I'm excited to have you on after the Germany game. And we have have some fallout from that game that we need to discuss. And that, of course, was the hip injury suffered late in the game by Leonard Fournette. And according to Adam Schefter, he should be ready to go for the Bucs next game on November 27th in Cleveland. That is Thanksgiving weekend. I will be there. Very excited. However... It, well, n- not in a press box, it's not. It's all nice and toasty. Oh, well, yeah, I'm talking about the players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the players, I feel bad for them. But you know what? I've been dealing with that weather for the last, like, two weeks. Uh, they can suck it up uh, because they live in Florida, and I'm jealous. Uh, when Todd Bowles met with the media on Monday, he said it's too early to tell Fournette's status and that they're going to have to reevaluate next week. So... Let's play the hypothetical game. We like to do that on the Locked On Bucks podcast. If Fournette is good to go in a week and a half against Cleveland, how do you feel following the win against the Seahawks in Germany that the running back workload should be divvied up between Lenny and Rashad White? Absolutely. I I think that the first off, uh, you know, Lenny got hurt, and that's why we saw a 62 to 30 some you know essentially a 60 30 share between white and lenny uh if he didn't get hurt it still felt like we were gonna get about a maybe a 55 45 type scenario uh between maybe lenny being the 55 uh having and of course fournette's passport issues led for the buccaneers to game plan with white in mind which is also a reason why he saw more action is because they thought that they were going to have to go into this game without Lenny at all. So that was uh, that just, just some foundational information we need to know entering this thought process. But having watched Rashad White, we talked about it on the Blitz last week, right? We, you know, we've all seen it. He is too good of a running back to limit his carries anymore. I think white, I think, I sorry, I think Fournette should be your kind of your third down back, your uh, red zone back. Um, but I think early downs, third and ones, you need to have white on the field and just ride the hot hand more than anything. I just think you should be giving Fournette and white early action. Who's got it that day? And then give them give them the predominant amount of carries. 
Yeah, and, and obviously that, that game plan worked against the Seahawks. Rashad White, first career 100-yard game. He threw digs into the you know sixth row of the uh, yeah. of the crowd. Uh, wins the Kyle Brandt angry run on uh, Good Morning Football. And yeah, it's something that I've been saying for a little while now, that the more you get Rashad White involved, especially early in the game, start wearing down the defense a little bit, that's when we saw Lenny make hay you know, a couple of years ago when the defense was kind of backed up against a wall, when they were tired, when they were sore, and then all of a sudden you hit him with, you know, a fresh Leonard Fournette, he's just mowing guys over, breaking off those big chunk runs, uh, you know, really looked like he was dominating. So I think, you know, keeping in that like 55-45 split range, it not only is going to benefit the Buccaneers offense, but I think it's going to benefit Leonard Fournette you know, from a, a stat line standpoint, I think his yards per carry are going to increase. He's going to get more, uh, more yards. He's going to get more touchdowns. Um, and the overall success of the team is, is what's most important. And it looks like, you know, small sample size that Rashad white being the primary back is what is best for the offense right now at this moment. Yeah. And that's not to say that when you push Lenny to a little bit more of a bench role, that he won't be pushed better on the field. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Fournette was just fine in Munich, right? He was averaging 4.1 yards per yeah. carry. His numbers uh, when he was on the field looked great. The, you know, in the end, the Buccaneers as a whole played a great game. And in a great game scenario, it didn't matter who you were going to throw back there because White and Lenny were both good. Uh, it was very intriguing that uh, I think Fournette had uh, one catch, and I think maybe Vaughn had a catch. Mm -hmm. but yeah, they he were had that third and ten where that's right. they're coming to nothing. That's right. And um, that was it. No checkdowns. Yeah. You know, teams were really – I mean, if you watched that, uh, you know, really that Panthers game, I think, was where they – refused to let them check the ball down and the Bucs were, were hell bent on checking it down. And this game with the Seahawks was really the first time where I felt like there was a significant tinkering in philosophy of changing tendencies and what they were doing. Uh, I, I think I, there was some good things there and it, you know, it's crazy how that win against the Rams, where everything was kind of going wrong in that game, too, really felt like in Munich we saw a relaxed Buccaneers squad because they just it, – it, it, I mean, what, they had three drives of more than 85 yards? And yeah, that was, they had three all year leading up to that point. Yeah, I think uh, – what, that was like the, the – the second time that they've done that ever uh, or something like – it's like – that's I mean, that's a rare feat. I forget what the stat is, but – Going 85 plus yards three times in a game is you're not going to find many times uh, a, a team doing that uh, across the league in a season. So that's um, that's a wow. That's that's a big time. Wow. Yeah, no doubt about it. And we're going to talk about somebody else that I think is making a big impact on this offense and in turn making a big impact on the team coming up in just a moment. This episode is brought to you by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. And with Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. You can browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the United States, UK, Canada, and coming soon to Australia. If you're going on a family road trip, you could book a spacious SUV or a minivan. You can get a classic or a luxury car for a special event like a birthday or a holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Or if you're looking into a new electric vehicle that you're kind of interested in, you can test drive it through Turo and see how it fits your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed. By liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions do apply. So forget about boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Thanks again for making Locked On a Bucks your first listen or view of the day. For the biggest headlines in all sports, 
Make sure that your second listen is Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you are listening to this podcast. And Evan, I, I want to talk about what we've seen heading into the bye now. And we're, we're going to take a look now down the stretch for the rest of the, the Buccaneers season. And I think a big part of the recent success of the Buccaneers and what is going to kind of snowball into you know the rest of the season has been Nick Leverett stepping in at guard. And, and I think he's played extremely well. Each week that he has been lined up at guard, the offense has gotten a little bit better. And I, I don't, I don't think that's a coincidence. And you know, all due respect to Luke Gedeke, you know, who's missed the last couple of games with injury, I personally don't see a path where Luke Gedeke is going to get this starting job back, barring any injury to Nick Leverett. So, what are what are your thoughts on the way that Leverett has played, and and what to expect maybe when Gedeke is off that injury report and back to being healthy? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be Nick Leverett. You watch the tape of Nick Leverett. He, um, you know, let's go back to the Tom Brady quote a week ago where he questioned the effort mm -hmm. from his teammates and his team in general. That is not Nick Leverett. In the middle of that losing streak, I'm watching Nick Leverett give every ounce of being on each play. And, and let me be clear, not every – play is great right i mean there are some mistakes in there um his fundies are not sound always but he is a really good run blocker and that's kind of what you need right now <laughs> and if i was a coach on that staff i would circle this guy in front of the whole team and be like this is what we need this is the effort that we need out of our players. So, you know, rewind games, watch number 60, just take a look at him because it's so much fun to watch. And he's growing with confidence in each and every game. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Tom Brady is able to make some deeper throws and stretch the field a little bit more when he feels like the pressure isn't there and he's not freaking out mentally that something's about to go wrong. I think he's gaining some trust in Leverett. Um, you know, I, Haynes, he's still kind of an up and down thing. But, uh, you know, that that performance week after week, I kind of see some inconsistencies. Same, I mean, Leverett too, but it's just, I don't know. There's a, there's a little bit of a dog in Leverett that it's, for me, I think it's a bad look to take him off the field. Maybe if things go south, that opens up an opportunity for Gedeke, you know, to sort of re-spark and re-examine. But while things are moving, you should not be tinkering with that offensive line. You gotta you gotta stay put. And and if Luke is injured, just take the time to get healthy. I mean, if if Nick goes down, Luke's got to go back in there. Um, I mean, he's been a, a, a clear out recently, but you know, if it's something where he can come back from it, like you know, now you've now you're building depth, right? Yeah. You're, so, so that's great. I mean, in the end, that's a great thing. Yeah, that, that means that your your backup, your depth, has starting NFL experience, even if it hasn't been the prettiest, it does help. And, and you know, maybe this gives Luke Gedeke a little bit more time to continue to develop because I do think he shows some promise. He just wasn't ready to be thrown into the fire the way that he was. But one of the things that you take a look at is, is the fact that the Bucs are starting to click, whether it's Rashad White and, and Leonard Fournette starting to get the run game going in Germany, whether that's Nick Leverett giving Brady an extra half second to a full second to throw the ball, stretch the field. You really have to hope that the bye week doesn't mess that up. Rather, it gives them a chance to kind of heal up, rest up, and hit reset on the season. You're back at 500. You got seven games left. You can kind of hit the reset button and say, you know what? Whole new season now coming out of the bye week. Um, you you take a look at, at the upcoming schedule. And honestly, I think they could probably win five of their next seven. Maybe more. Could be less if we see the, you know, the same Buccaneers team that we saw against the Carolina Panthers. But they're at Cleveland, home against the Saints on Monday night. At San Francisco, home against the Bengals, at the Cardinals on Christmas, home against the Panthers, and then at Atlanta. So they're not back-to-back -back at home or on the road 
the rest of the way. And only two of the teams that they face are currently above 500. Is this, in your opinion, when we see the Buccaneers get hot, and start to make some noise kind of the way we expected them to do all season long. Yes. Uh, I don't – I mean, and and define hot because they're 5-5 five and five now. What I will say is I believe they're going to hit nine wins at least, right? So um, – That's four and three. Yeah, so that puts them at, at nine and eight. Nine and eight wins a division, I think. Mm-hmm. It, it, how those four wins shake out, I'm not a hundred percent sure. If I would, if I were a betting man, if I were a betting man, if uh, Saints, Panthers, Falcons, I think they're all going to win those games. Unless the division sealed up by the time they head to Atlanta, then maybe they kind of just say screw it and like rest some people or whatever. You know, they might they might be half in. Who knows? But you know, I, I, I'm worried about at the Browns. It's a at a conference game with Saints coming up the following week. Though you're coming off a bye, weather could be an issue. We'll we'll see. They they also, I mean, they lost on the road at the Panthers. They lost on the road at Pittsburgh. They, you know, but the Browns are a ground and pound team. They have their defense all healthy. They should be able to stop Nick Chubb uh, or limit him at least. Niners is is a really tough game, but. Tom Brady will be heavily incentivized to do well out there. That's home. Um, you know, I, I like I like them at home against Cincy. The Cardinals are a tire fire, but who knows on Christmas where their headspace is at. I think they're going to womp Carolina as a as a we remembered that loss sort yeah. of game. So, um, long story short, you know, this these are your NFC South champions, barring a significant injury or slew of injuries, they should take the division. And at this point, you just want to see progress in that offensive development because they kind of are who they are at this point. I think Tom said by Thanksgiving, you want to know what time kind of team you are, that there's no reinventing this offense at this point. You can tinker, which is what they're going to do during the bye week and and self-evaluate and maybe throw some new wrinkles in there. But uh, you're, you're kind of stuck with what you have and, you know, unless Rob Gronkowski is going to come back, which, you know, who knows, uh, you know, it doesn't look likely as we said all way back when I'm not counting it out, but it's still an, if you never know, uh, once, you know, the Buccaneers get, get on a heater. I'm also really surprised that OBJ rumors haven't picked up for, for Tampa Bay either. And, and why, you know, the Buccaneers are not in that mix. They, um, they seem to still be mentioned, uh, but really it, it's kind of gotten quiet right around the time that he's about to get cleared. So I don't know, maybe. Yeah, it just, it's like, why, why would you go to the Packers? Why would you go to oh, the Rams? Will, yeah, why he, would you go to the Rams? Oh. So that, le- you know, the Bills don't look like the sure fired thing anyway. And, and does OBJ really want to live in Buffalo? Um, he's only got to do it for a couple months. I know, but it's the, it's the rough couple of months. So, I mean, I, I, you know, like San Francisco is a great option, obviously, but you're playing with Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some give and some take there. I just don't understand why wouldn't, why the Buccaneers wouldn't be an amazing team for him to go to in a sense of like, Hey, here is, here's the tape on, uh, how we use Antonio Brown. This is going to be you. Yeah, no doubt about it. We're going to talk about, you know, some of the players of star players awards handed out just a moment here for the first half of the season. This show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Adding your job listing is quick and easy, and you can add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions, Make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. 
It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. This episode also brought to you by our friends at betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis with the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net, where the Buccaneers are currently tied with the Dolphins at plus 1,800 to win the Super Bowl. Not going to lie, I would put my money on the Buccaneers before I would put them on the Cowboys, who are sitting at plus 1,400. What? Anyway, if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Wrapping things up here on a WTSP Wednesday edition of the Locked On Box podcast. Evan, you brought up Odell Beckham Jr. Can you imagine him opposite of Justin Jefferson in Minnesota? Oh, that would be fun. Oh, that'd be not, so much not, fun not for any teams in the NFC, but that'd be fun. Oh man, he looked good fun. in purple. He looked good in purple. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he's an LSU guy. Um, oh man, that'd be a lot of fun to watch. Just from a completely unbiased standpoint, give me an offense with Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., and Dalvin Cook. Huh. blasty blast! That is what everyone thought the AFC West was going to be, but the AFC West is garbage and we all laugh at their pain mid season quote unquote awards from Mr. Evan Klosky. Let's take a look back at the first 10 games of this Buccaneer season. We've had some highs, we've had some lows, but we've had some standout players. Let's start with rookie of the year, which to me is a two horse race. Uh, but I'm interested to see who you think is the, uh, the rookie of the year so far. Well, your two horses. Uh, that would be Cade Otten and Rashad White. Jake Camarda is my rookie of the year. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, uh, that's on me. That's on me. Jake I knew Camarda when you said two horses. Phenomenal. Yeah, I just – this offense has been so stanky. How can you not give love to Jake Camarda, who is – thriving right now i mean the last two games he is smacking the blank out of the ball just uh holy toledo pat mcafee uh is happy about that (laughs) hashtag but but yeah i mean um look rashad white's been great i just don't think that he's had enough time on the field for me to really give him the honor even though back half of the year he might end up being the rookie of the year if he gets to the, the the playing time we think that he should get uh kate otten uh, also has provided arguably the best moment of the Buccaneers season in, you know, with Tom Brady, of course. But I mean, in that two minute drill, he's been a, a, a wonderful asset for Tom in these hurry up type situations, end of half uh, to, you know, these two minute drills, whatever you have, you know, whatever you might have. Um, there's been a little inconsistency for me, uh, a couple of drops here. The blocking hasn't been perfect. But uh, certainly has stepped up with Cameron Bray out for the majority of the first half of the year. So I, I love his progression. He's not there yet, but you can definitely see the receiving chops and why they drafted him. It just I think the blocking needs some some work. Yeah, and, and we are going to revisit these. I'm going to save these Sam. after the season. Keep we're going to receipts, it baby, and, and and see if. If your midseason awards are also your end of season awards, but let's Mm -hmm. take a look at the defensive side of the ball. Who has been your defensive player of the year so far? And I'm I'm really interested to hear this one because I know who mine would be, but I'm not sure what direction you're going to go in. Now I know he missed a couple of games, but my defensive player of the year is Antoine Winfield Jr. That's as well. Yep, he is. I know he just got a new agent. He's looking for a deal in the offseason. And and as long as Todd Bowles is head coach, you need to pay him. Oh, yes. When you are as versatile as he is, 
and what Todd Bowles wants to do in this defense. The only explanation I would I would hear about not signing him is it's, this is back to back years now. He's had a concussion. I mean, we're getting to the point of where you know, like Wayne Krebet status of like just ta- you know tallying them up every year. But you know, outside of that, you watch the tape. This is an all pro player. He is phenomenal, and I love watching him play. He, he is uh, to me the linchpin of this defense. And if I had to pick one of the, the guy to, to draft um, number one right now through the season, not long-term, not a friend, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Just I'm telling you that the, the, the 10 games we've seen, Antoine Winfield Jr., number one on my list. He's With competition, been, but number one. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, no doubt about it. He is He's going to make himself a lot of money. Evan, who is your offensive player of the year? Tristan Wirfs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, again, the offense has been so stanky, so consistently. I think none of them deserve recognition outside of Wirfs, who has been as steady as they come. You want to talk about getting paid? The Buccaneers need to prepare a huge stack of money for Tristan Wirfs. And not, you know, they can wait uh, another year before they do that. But, you know, there's, there's a few players on their list that, you know, that's what ha- look, I mean, Devin White's got to get paid. There's a lot of people that got to get paid. You're not gonna be able to pay them all, but Tristan Wirfs is again, another dude long-term should be ring of honor status uh, of this team. And um, there's been a lot of ups and down with that offensive line, but, and, and, Worfs, at least in the, you know, in some plays, has been tasked to do a lot because of the inefficiencies. But I mean, man, that guy is wonderful. <laughs> He's so good. It's amazing. All right, and finally, who is your team MVP through ten weeks? Team MVP, Levante David. Uh, again. I'm looking for consistency with this award. He's second on the team with tackles. I know he's only got one sack. The splash plays still are not there, and I know he wants them to be. They're still not there. Um, But this dude has just done his job week in, week out. And I think in a season that's been crazy up and down, uh, effort hasn't been there for some, uh, you know, mistakes here. What are you doing over there? I just – I never once this season have been like, what the hell is Levante doing? Like he just, he just, he goes out there and he always does his job. And I think out of a captain, out of people that you respect, out of things you're looking for in an MVP, that's what I'm looking for, especially with what the season has been like. If Devin didn't have the three week kind of loafing, the loaf gate, the three weeks of what are you doing? Like, where is the, where is the guy from September? Um, he, Devin's probably number two on my defensive play of the year and, and, and pretty close up there for my MVP. I just, I have to take into account the, the cruddy middle of the season during an imperative part of the year uh, sure. because, because he's a pro bowler, like locked in. I mean, as long as he doesn't get hurt, Devin White's making the pro bowl uh, as you know, and, and as long as he doesn't give half-ass effort, but well, Levante and- David is my MVP. When we revisit this, you know, if he if he plays the last seven the way he's played, you know, these past two weeks, uh, no doubt in my mind he's going to end up your uh, your MVP. So, all right, <laughs> with that, we are going to get out of here. Make sure you are coming back tomorrow and Friday. We have some really fun guests lined up to round out by week. Not going to spoil it. Just oh. you know, sometimes things happen, but. Some really exciting shows coming for you on Thursday and Friday. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. Now, make sure for the biggest headlines in all sports, you are checking out Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you are listening to this podcast. Of course, you can check out everything that Evan is doing over on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 tampabay.com. Check out my work over at bucksnation.com. Follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks and at E. Klosky, WTSP. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. And we thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.